Hi, and welcome to Mid-American Gardener. I'm Sandy Mason with the University of Illinois Extension as the State Master Gardener Coordinator, and we are so glad you've decided to join us. Can you feel it? Spring is definitely in the air. Do you know what you're going to plant this year? Maybe you're trying to figure out what went wrong last year and you want to make sure it doesn't happen again. Or maybe you're trying to decide where those perennials ought to be moved to. I know I have a plan to move a few perennials around. So we're here to help you out on Mid-American Gardener. And we always have a great group of people to answer your gardening questions. And tonight uh, we have Jennifer. Hi, Sandy. Thanks. Uh, I'm Jennifer Nelson and I am a horticulturalist that writes a blog called Grounded and Growing. And I brought a show and tell today of an orchid that we can plant in our gardens here um, in zone five-ish. Um, it's called Blotilla Yokohama. Kate is the variety name and it's also called a Chinese ground orchid. It normally is not this big this time of year. Uh, it's typically um, blooming in May, but this one's been forced. I got it at a plant sale recently and it's starting to form a flower so it'll bloom out before I get it out in the garden, but put it in a sheltered location. Depending on the reference you look at, they're hardy to zone five or six. So I put it in a sheltered spot with good well-drained soil and it does great. So this is a, this is a perennial. We don't it's think about perennial. orchids yes, that we we've don't. actually put out in our flower garden. So it's no. perennial. And then it would it be, it's more like a shade garden thing where you it, put it in with your hostas and stuff? I or? have it in a shade garden with okay. some hostas kind of underneath a tree. Um, it does pretty well. It does seem to appreciate regular moisture. I've lost some where I've let it get too dry. Oh, okay. Um, but it's one that is not super expensive. So you can um, fun. have some fun, play around. I, I love trying new plants. Yes. That's a great thing. Okay, and Shane. I'm Shane Coulter. I'm uh, one of the family of owners of Country Arbors Nursery in Urbana, Illinois and Onarga, Illinois. And we grow a little bit of everything, annuals, perennials, trees, shrubs. So I have kind of have a little bit of information about every single one of them. <laughs> and tonight I brought uh, a little sample of something. A lot of people have mulch and mulch is great for the plants. There's nothing better that breaks down into, you know, into soil. But it comes a time where people get tired financially and even ec uh, economically and physically of putting down mulch. So I brought something called bark stone and it really does look like bark. It looks, it's got that brown color, it's got great texture to it. And it's something you can put down and you put down once and then you don't have to put it down again. And, and the nice thing about this is, you know, everybody uses locally sourced rock, which is great because it's less expensive. You have River Rock, you have Merrimack, which is from St. Louis area. And so they buy it because it's cheap. But this one is so light that you, we buy it by the ton and you get three times the coverage mm -hmm. of another stone. Oh, wow. So the price may be more expensive from the shipping, but it comes out to be about the same as the rest of them locally. But it's really nice looking. It's something different. It's something that uh, is readily available uh, in the area. So it's something that called bark stone. You think bark about putting stone. it. In. Bark stone. It's an easy name to remember because yeah. it looks like bark, but it's stone. Yeah, it really does look like bark when mm -hmm. you look at it. And it's kind of, yeah. I like the colors on it because it really yeah. has some nice natural colors to yeah. it. So I can see it blending with the landscape very nicely. Yeah, I think so. it's a nice mix. So you get kind of tired of seeing the same stone over and over and yeah, over in right, every yard. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Thanks, Shane. And Kay. Hi, I'm Kay Carnes. I'm a Champaign County Master Gardener. Uh, and I brought a couple of broccoli plants with me tonight that I started uh, at the beginning of February. Uh, this one is called Green Goliath. Um, <clears throat> and it's called that because it's supposed to get gigantic, huge um, uh, heads on it. And um, so that it's really good for freezing and canning. And the other one is the other end of the spectrum, and this is a rather unusual looking broccoli plant. It's called um, Purple Peacock Sprouting Broccoli. And I've grown the sprouting broccolis. They're actually my favorite um, for a number of years. And you, never, you don't get one huge head. You get a lot of little side shoots, but it continually produces from the time it matures until uh, it freezes in the, in the late fall, early winter. So it's really nice for picking for a meal, um, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a nice, it's a really pretty. The, the shoots uh, that you pick will be a, a purple color, okay. um, and it's really kind of decorative. And so you started these from seeds, I, I take did. it. So do you think it's too late to start from seed if people want their own plants? Uh, not, not this year if because they get, it's, you yeah. know, it's still cold. It okay. is a cool weather crop, but a lot of times I don't get them in until you know, April or so, but ideally you want to 
get them out as soon as you know the weather. Yeah. So if they get is, the seeds, get them planted right away, mm -hmm. they could still have some. These plants. actually, I sprouted in two days. Oh, oh my. my. I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. <laughs> we like that. And actually, I, I've grown that green goliath broccoli before, but the heads are so big mm -hmm. that if you have a fam, unless you have a family that likes yeah. to eat a lot of broccoli, it was almost like too much right. at times. So I like the, the idea of the sprouting broccoli because yeah. it's, yeah. it's just maybe a little bit more manageable. Mm -hmm. but unless I, you're going to freeze, freeze it. Or, yeah, so unless you're going to freeze them. Okay, fine. very good. Oh, good, good. I always like, always like to think about new vegetables as well. So, And remember our podcast, if you haven't had a chance, chance to listen to it. I actually did one for this week. So you can see we had all kinds of questions. We, we did a lot of the voicemail questions that people have. Uh, and it was everything from Eastern chipmunks to uh, pruning blueberry bushes, you name it. So check out the podcast. We really had a lot of fun with them. And remember, if you have any questions that you'd like to have us uh, take care of, either either on the show or through the podcast or whatever, um, then just contact us. Send your questions through Facebook or email or certainly through our voicemail. We have this new voicemail number now. So three o'clock in the morning, you want to send a voicemail, you certainly can do that. And that's 217-300-8224. But of course, for tonight, our phone call is actually, you can go ahead and call us now at 217-333-3495. Uh, but we do have a caller. We'll go right to our lines. And on line two, we have Rick from Shelbyville. And you have a question, sounds like from about blueberries. What can we do for you, Rick? Yeah, my dad's 93 years old. He's had some blueberry bush about 25 years old, oh. and I want to transplant them. So how, when's the best time to do that? Uh, how deep do you dig them? Uh, are they going to need a trellis or something to climb on, or what? So blueberries, and you want to transplant them, sounds like. But they're 25 years old? Ooh. Wow, those oh, are some wow. old blueberries. Yeah. How big? Yeah. So they, what, how big are they? Pretty good size. Or, well, they I guess they were trimmed back last year. They're about three, four foot tall right now. So. Okay. So what do you think? Yeah, so now is a good time. Mm -hmm. um, you said three foot tall. <laughs> you probably want a 15 inch root ball. So you're going to be about 15 inches wide, maybe 15, 18 inches deep. And the easiest way is, uh, without getting too uh, technical, is to draw that circle around the 15 inches and dig a moat around it, mm -hmm. and then take your shovel. So you want, you want to dig this little trench around that hole, and then dig dig your shovel in, and then you can get a root ball. If you try and just put your shovel in, your shovel is not going to be deep enough mm -hmm. to make a root ball. So dig a moat first, and then dig the root ball, and then try and put it in burlap or some kind of something to hold it together while you transplant it. But now is a pretty good time. We're yeah, digging in the fields so right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. So it's Very a good, good time. Well, good yeah. for you. That's a, it's nice to have that kind of heritage, isn't it? Maybe some mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that is. Your family had. So very good. Thanks for that question. And on line three, we have Tom from Gibson City. And you have a question about grapevines. What can we do for you, Tom? Uh, yes. Which way are grapevines supposed to run? East and west or north and south? Oh, oh. when you plant them? That's a good question. Does it on the make vine? a difference? It does well, for for, for shading. It, it for the people that grow <laughs> wine, they would yeah. say, "Of course it does," but I don't grow wine, so I'm not sure exactly. <laughs> but yeah, they absolutely. Um, Oh, you'll see the vineyards all go the same direction. I just don't. Know I guess what that I is. would almost think you'd want it, the vines running uh, north and south think, because yeah. that to way they get, the get good, sun. you know, sun morning sun. light and good afternoon light. Mm -hmm. I would think that would be the maximum light. Yeah. Where's Bob's Curvin when you need it? Yeah, him? Bob's Curvin yeah. would be a really good question. Maybe we we'll have to pass that on to him. But I would think you'd want to maximize your light, That's so that I would be the thing where the vines sense. would actually mm -hmm. run north and yeah. south, and then mm -hmm. so you get some good light that way. But I don't know if you're doing it for wine. Maybe there's a different way of doing it. Yeah, there's a certain. There is. There. They've got it down to an art as far as okay, we may have to, you know, but that's a good question for, for us Bob. around here. We we don't really care as long as mm -hmm. we just plant them <laughs> and they get sunlight, so we don't actually we're to keep them make alive. them run. You know, we don't trellis them because we're not looking to get wine grapes. So I, I'm not sure. It's a great question. Though. Okay, we may have to yeah. move that one on to another yeah. time, but hopefully that'll at least give you some ideas. I didn't so think we get question. stumped tonight. That was yeah, who <laughs> right knew? off the bat. Yeah, <laughs> right that. Anyway. we'll do okay, better. So, on line four, uh, we have Logan from Springfield. What can we do for you? You have a question Hi. about. Uh -huh. I, I apologize if I haven't, if you've already been asked this, but I've been out of town for a while. But what is a good time to start sowing grass seed here in central Illinois? That's a great question. So thank you very much. It would, you could put it out now, now but it, yeah. it yeah. may not do anything for a while. But yeah, I would. Yeah. I would 
nothing to lose to put it out now. Yeah. Yeah. April's usually, I always think about April as being a pretty good time too. Yeah, mm -hmm. but think about if you're putting crabgrass preventer out, that will also prevent your uh, grass seed from growing. So you might need to change, change your timing or not use that product if you usually do. Okay. Okay, so it's good. You know, I think that's a great thing about spring is that you can start doing mm -hmm. these things like that you maybe you forgot to do last year or you <laughs> ran out of time or that whatever. That never happens at our house. Yeah, it never Andy. happens. There's so many things you can do, but certainly sowing grass seed would be a good one. Yeah. Certainly starting a lot of the veg, a lot of our vegetable yeah. plants can mm -hmm. be started pretty early. So what are some of the early like vegetable plants that people could actually, you know, even think about? Lettuce, you know? go plant some lettuce, lettuce this weekend. Well, okay, lettuce, yeah. a lot of the leafy stuff. Lettuce, radishes, radishes, radishes are really okay. cold hardy and there that's a great thing to start okay. um, now spinach um, kale lots of reasons yeah. to get outside okay yeah Very there's good. no reason not right now to be cleaning your yard start oh, trimming yeah, yeah. you know we saw some signs of it last weekend when the weather around Midwest was nice, <laughs> uh, but it doesn't have to be nice to go out and trim your yard. <laughs> oh, that's true, too. You, you I've can, got all you, my flower beds cleaned Yeah, up. my yard's it's completely oh, clean. Yeah. And you, you, can come, you can come Kay. to my house, Kay. Yeah. Yeah. Really, I mean, come, come to my house if you run out of something to do. Okay, yeah. very good. Okay, and then <laughs> on line two, we have Christy from Monticello, and you have a question about uh, trees, a tree selection. What can we do for you, Christy? Yes, I have to replace a tree. It's, it's close to the corner of the house, about 15 foot out from the corner of the house. And I need a canopy because I had hostas underneath there from the old tree that I lost. And I've really been pouring through books that I'm kind of struggling with deciding what to pick. Yeah, good, good question because trees are such a, a long-term <laughs> investment. Mm -hmm. So what would be good? So it sounds like it's pretty close to the house, like 15 it, feet or so from the house. What tree are you losing and why is it coming down? Is, did it have a disease? pine there that was that was really old and been okay. there oh. at the house 20 years ago and okay. it just started dying from the top okay because so sometimes it makes right, a like difference time for a new tree yeah so what would be some good selections so fairly close to the house yeah i mean the problem is everybody when they lose a tree they put a new tree in and you just can't put a tree in that's big enough to mm -hmm. protect what's been lost. Right. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. um, so no matter what we put in, it's not going to prevent those hostas from burning for, right. for right. quite a while. So you're going to have to adjust that bed underneath. I'm a big fan of like an ivory silk lilac. The studio here is loaded with them. Um, it is kind of, it's getting to be overplanted because it's such a great tree. But if you don't have a lot in the neighborhood, an ivory silk lilac mm -hmm. is you know, 20 feet tall, 20 foot wide, blooms in the summer when nothing else blooms, the bark's pretty mm -hmm. in the winter. It's one of the plants I, that don't seem to mind the clay as much either, so okay. it's uh, pretty hardy. Um, so that's so it's a, a lilac, but it's a tree it's lilac. It's a tree lilac, yeah, the name right. is, it is a lilac, All but right. it's not like the bush where you go out and right. smell. The fragrance is okay, but it's not really grown for that. But the leaf is dark, rich green, and again, it'll fit in that space. So I think an ornamental at 15 foot more you wanna be, um, a hedge maple could be in that range, a maybe some maple. small crab apples, mm -hmm. small maybe? crab apples. There's some great crabs now that are more resistant to blight. Even mm -hmm. prairie fires struggle a little bit. So some of the newer ones, uh, ornamental crab and the cherry or the berries are size of cherry pits now. So they're not messy. A lot of people come right. in just thinking of the big dolgo mm -hmm. crab apples and oh no, I don't want a crab apple. They're yeah. messy. No yeah. things have changed. But I do, I do like crab apples. So good for the pollinators. Yeah, and the birds but love them. I, I think you brought up a good point: is that you're not going to have an instant shade right. garden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you may have to move the hostas somewhere else for yeah. a little while, and suddenly you have a sun garden. Yeah, That's, you just you, you can buy only so much time. Yeah, <laughs> you can buy you can buy up, but you just can't buy 20 years. Yeah, yeah, so. right, right. Okay, good, good. Good answers. Good things to think about. So hopefully that helps you, Christy. And on line three, we have Roger uh, about, uh, from Oriana about uh, sowing grass. Yeah, uh, what uh, I heard in regards to sowing grass was really the last uh, snowfall. Oh, uh, you hear that because, a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, this way you can see yeah. the so uh, the amount of seeds you put down, but then it also gives it a little bit of uh, water to uh, get going. And uh, then it uh, just uh, takes off, uh, takes off that way. Yeah, I, you hear that, that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it works. I mean, mm -hmm. as it melts and it settles into it. Right. That's I one think way that's of doing the it. There's yeah. more than one time to do it. You know, right. Labor right. Day for us is by mm -hmm. far our favorite time to do it because it's a little cooler. Right. Right. And right. Uh, you get warm. still get some warmth to get it. Mm -hmm. So Labor Day for us is just ideal. But yeah, you can do it in the winter when you when the snow melts. That's a great mm -hmm. time. You can do it now. 
you can do it essentially all summer. It just comes down to the amount of water right. that you right. need during the right. season. Summer's a lot more difficult, but very doable. You just mm -hmm. just have to sit outside the entire time all summer <laughs> and water and your water. job. It's, you know, you become a full-time water person. That's fine, but you can yeah. do it. So that is. But I think probably sometimes we, we wait, you know, we think about waiting maybe even into April because then, then it starts to warm up, especially mm -hmm. if you're yeah. doing Kentucky bluegrass grass seed, which is notoriously slow to germinate anyway. Yeah. Cold soil um, is not And good, the problem yeah. is the longer the seed sits there, the more apt it might be to either something eats yeah. it or it doesn't mm -hmm. germinate well. So I think some of that, sometimes we think about, you but know, you want to maximize how fast it But the soil temperatures are goes. much, high, are much right. higher than they normally are. Normally the soil temperatures, soil temperatures are, higher are right now. much higher. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you know, right. We don't have frost in the Good ground point. again for the second year. So we're a little bit ahead hmm. of where we were. So we're getting close. Glad you brought that up. Okay, yeah. very good. And on line four, we have Josh from Mattoon. And it sounds like you're ready to move some peonies. Um, yeah, actually, um, I'm moving from a house. So I had two clumps of kind of sentimental special peonies. And I put them in a neighbor's yard last fall um, to transplant them down there just you know, so they'd be out of the yard and I could make sure I could keep them. And they kind of broke apart um, these clumps whenever I took them out of the ground. And uh, they were the roots were all in pieces. So I put them in the ground and I don't know which way was up. <laughs> and they're kind of all jumbled in there. And I'm really, I, I'm kind of worried that I'm going to lose them. So is there anything I should do in the spring in my neighbor's yard to replant them or anything? Or should I just leave them be and hope that I can transplant them again and, you know, by the end of summer or something. Okay, so moving peonies. Mm. That's a tough call. Well, you did the right thing in the fall. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, generally we want to do them usually in, in September. Fall is when you do it, and then they right. look like little carrots. So they look like long carrots, essentially the root system. So that it's not unusual. You're probably expecting these fibrous type roots, and mm -hmm. they just have a totally different look than a normal right. perennial. We still plant them in the spring, just because a, a lot of times we forget and we're busy, and so we do buy the bare root. Uh, peonies and plant them. It's better to plant them in the fall, but it is doable. Again, we talked earlier about doing things now. Uh, you could probably do peonies now. I would, if you know where they're at, you could probably go hunt them down, dig them up, and plant them in your next area, even right now. You can but maybe that. if he if he can leave them, would he probably yeah. just go ahead and leave them until September? Mm -hmm. If he can leave them in if your you neighbor's can, yard. Yeah, yeah, that's true. There's a lot of cases. If you can do it, I, ideally August is the mm -hmm. best time. Yeah. But uh, if you have to do them now, I think it's probably going to be okay because we, right. we do we do have some decent luck. Summer is a whole nother ball game. Yeah, yeah, and plants are so amazing is that even if we get them a little jumbled up, that plants are pretty good at sort of Figure figuring out what it, what's yeah. up yeah. <laughs> and what's yeah, down. Yeah. So hopefully that will still yeah. work out I had to move some in the spring one year, and they didn't bloom that year, but then they yeah. recovered. So that's a good point. Yeah. So maybe the flowering yeah. won't be all that great, mm -hmm. but just to realize they're, yeah. they're, pro they're probably still alive and do well for you. So good. Yeah. I, and I love peonies because mm -hmm. there's a lot of sentimentality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. with peonies yeah. when you have them from your grandma or your mom or whatever so that's great okay good thanks and on line five we have roberta from tolono and you have a question about honeysuckle uh yes um i have uh, one uh honeysuckle vine uh up, up, up by my house on a trellis and it has red blooms on it uh but it doesn't have a uh, there's no smell to it Oh. Um, and then I'll also, I live near a railroad, and uh, there's several of the uh, white honeysuckle bushes out along there, and they have no odor to them. Hmm. And I would just, any suggestions, answers, or... <laughs> Okay, like why they don't have fragrance. Yeah. I don't know that I've yeah. seen it on the vine, the you know the the ornamental vines that we yeah. grow, not the invasive ones. Right. I don't know if I've ever noticed Mine. a lot of fragrance with no, those. I haven't not. noticed yeah. any. No. Yeah. So maybe on certainly in those, there's a good reason why because they just not they just don't have that kind yeah. of genetics to yeah, really have probably. much fragrance. Yeah. There's a lot of different honeysuckles out there. Yeah, there's a lot of different honeysuckles, and of course the one that's like crazy wild, you know, invasive <laughs> that's in every woodland and stuff. We don't want that in our yard, yeah. um, which tends to be unfortunately the, some of the fragrant, more fragrant mm -hmm. ones. So that may be just something unfortunately we just don't have for you. So. Any rate. Yeah. I'm not sure there's anything you can do about that one. So good. Yeah. And then on line two we have Fred from Tuscola. And then you have a you have a tip for us about grass seed? On line two, Fred? Yes. Thank uh -huh. you for taking my call. Sure. Um, I have a comment on the grass seed. Uh, usually springtime you're going to your rings. Uh, <clears throat> the best thing that I found very successful, you take uh, your grass seed, 
put it in a uh, nylon stocking pantyhose, uh, and you soak that in five gallons of water, pr- approximately, depending on the amount of seed you got, and, and soak that overnight, and you work that water in there, your water's going to turn about a color of coffee. I do that twice, two rounds of it in two days. Then I take it out and let it drip dry for the third day. And the fourth day, I just take and put it in a, a trash bag with a hair dryer. I dry it faster that way, and then I sew it. What it does, it washes off that preservative. It's stratified. And once you have uh. that, you just kind of rake it in lightly. And I have great success with that on an early jump start. Oh, huh. so it kind of like almost pre-germinates it or kind of gets it get going. Get any kind of retired. Off. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's retired. Somebody's <laughs> retired. You might have a little extra time. <laughs> the average homeowner. Was, uh, <laughs> great to, I've never heard that before. It's but not that different. Like we we do all our vegetable sure. seeds that way. We, strat- like we soak, soak them in soak water, the seeds, especially peppers. Then, peppers, that okay. cuts it in half for yeah. me. Oh, yeah, wow. soaking the seeds. So yeah. that's actually, that's good, but I never thought about it with grassy. I just, you know, the grassy, there's, that's so much grassy. <laughs> and but I good for you for trying that. Yeah, no, I mean, it really, he's 100% right. That absolutely works. So you're not going to save but four or five days, but uh, <laughs> but hey, I that mean, that's, that's a great tip, I, That's what I love about this show. We, we learn from each other, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And on line three, we have William from Mount Auburn, and you have a question about pruning, sounds like. Yes. Um, I have a very old burning bush in my front yard, 50, 60 years old, and uh, the, in- uh, the interior of it, the middle section of the bush is real shallow it's just nothing but large branches now i was wondering how far back can i cut this bush okay burning bush how far back can you cut it much as you'd like i gotta yeah. say i've done yeah. a pretty good job of cutting yeah. it I oh, was, you're I ready was... to cut it at ground level <laughs> yeah, or no maybe i've cut oh. it i've cut it back pretty hard though oh. at various times of year just out of necessity and had it recover yeah. quite well you know, we, we had a, a case where they had what they called the monstrosa, which is the big oh. one. It's 20 feet, and they just absolutely didn't want it, and they wanted six feet. And so <laughs> I, they let me literally take a chainsaw and take it to five feet, and they said, wow. if it lives, then fantastic. If it dies, we were going to cut it down anyway. And it flushed out and looked gorgeous. And I That's pretended amazing. like I knew what I was doing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> but really, I was just, just trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I was like, they did exactly what I thought it would do. But I really had no clue. But yeah, yeah. so they're, they're tough as nails. Yeah, so, that, so that's the good news. You can do some heavy printing. And this would yeah. be a good time to do it, right? Yeah, I mean, that was so, a great time. Good, good. Yeah, you'll get a nice flush if you do it now. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and go through our second round of it got an email for us, Jennifer? Yeah, I do. I have a question uh, from Peter and Betsy on lawn receding. Uh, they write that back in October, they managed to kill a smallish area of lawn with too much fertilizer. They had a problem <laughs> with a spreader dumping a bunch on the lawn. And they want to know, can they reseed it later this fall or wait till spring? And when can they reseed? This is just the grass show, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is yeah. the grass show. And the Re-seed good news lawn. is, is that, I'm sorry we didn't get to your, to your uh, question until March, but October would have you wouldn't have had any time to reseed because that fertilizer was there, but nitrogen washes away really easily. So I would say it's probably washed out by now and go okay. ahead and try it. And if it's if you have problems with germination, then wait a little bit and try again. But or put it in pantyhose. Put yeah. it in the pantyhose, do the pantyhose method. Yeah, yeah while you're waiting. Um, we have a new technique. But definitely okay, all is not lost and thankfully it was just a bunch of nitrogen and not something something else yeah sometimes okay okay very good and shane what do you all right well we're we're staying with the theme the question (laughs) is uh (laughs) what is the best time to divide my perennials are there any type that should not be divided and i'll say most perennials this is a great time as start as as soon as you see the the uh little plant coming up whatever perennial it is it's starting to poke up that's a really good time it's got a little bit of vigor you can see where it is you can divide it up the things that i stay away from normally are iris daylily and and peony but i will say iris and daylily are are so tough that yeah. you can move them if you'd like right. to we do quite a bit of moving but you know ideally they tell you summer for those three and it's a great time to plant those three but everything else Get the shovel out, get the hand trowel out, find the plants and divide and share. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah. I, I had a master gardener tell me one time that all her perennials uh, have wheels. Yeah. So <laughs> that she just moves them around. Yeah. Just keep moving her around. Okay. Yeah. And how about you, Kay? Um, well, I have an asparagus question. And they said they've had an asparagus patch for years. And last year, the none came up. Um, is, is there any hope for this year? And I, 
Yeah, I think there is. There's always hope. <laughs> There's all, yeah, especially with asparagus. And last year the problem was, um, and I didn't have nearly as much as I normally do, we did not have any cold. Uh, yeah. Asparagus needs a really good cold spell okay. uh, to promote growth. Uh, you might also try, you know, get some fertilizer on it, make sure you clean out any weeds around it. And um, it's certainly it, certainly oh, worth the effort. Worth trying. It's easier prayer. than putting in okay. a new bed. <laughs> Again, I love springtime because we have so many great questions about new things to do and maybe thinking about putting in a new asparagus patch, whatever it is. And remember, people can you can always connect us through uh, Facebook or email. Certainly, if you have any questions for us that you want us to deal with, either through voicemail or the podcast or whatever it is, be sure to connect with us, and we'd be glad to help you out because we always have a wealth of information. And again, we learn from you. Maybe you can give us some tips on how to start grass seed or something like that. <laughs> so I'm going to remember that one for sure. So, so thank you all very much and have a great week gardening.